Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Bonnie from Arts Management Systems, and today's ACT webinar is going to be on rolling over a season subscription package. So we're going to start off reviewing the detail, the setup items that we need prior to rolling over our package. We're going to roll over the package itself, and then we're going to review some of the details following that rollover. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here so that that way everybody can see what it is we're doing. All right, so here we are inside our season package window, not to worry, we are going to be coming back here so everyone will know how to navigate here once we're done. But before we jump into creating or rolling over our package, there's a bunch of setup we need to do in advance. So we want to ensure that we have a control house built prior to our rollover, and we want to have at least one of the events we're going to be using for next season built inside the database. If you're unfamiliar with how to set up an event, please take a look at the video that we created in our YouTube channel on building new events. It will give you some broader details on that. For today's session, we're just going to review existing events I've already set up. So I'm going to head to events up at the top of the window here. And the events I've built are in the 2022 season. So we're just going to enter that at the top of our search to find them a little faster. You may be searching by event title or something of that nature. We're gonna start with our control house. I'm gonna give this a double click to open it up. And inside our control house, we're just gonna cover a couple of key elements of things we want to make sure that we've set in the control house when we're building our performance or building our events. So my control house is just called control house in the year. We want some definitive item that's going to make it stand out from other control houses. You might have a slightly different naming convention for your control house, that's perfectly okay. Whatever's gonna stand out for you. I'm using the same map that my last year's events were built off of. If we're changing our map, that's going to be a little bit different. It means that we're gonna see a couple of different prompts while we're doing our rollover. If we are changing our map and moving to a different venue, we do need to make sure that the capacity is the same size and that the map is inside the same um, overall venue as opposed to just being a separate venue by itself. Inside our event here, we also have set our printing to mark tickets as printed, but don't print. We've done this because we don't really need a control house ticket that we're going to be giving to our patrons. It also means that if we are offering print at home, the control house ticket isn't going to be a part of those tickets that are generated as PDFs for our patron to hold on to when we do the rollover of our season. In our accounting tab, we're going to set up our accounting tab the same way we do the rest of our season. And for each organization, there's a chance this could be slightly different. So for this particular um, example, what we've done is used a deferred revenue structure. That means that we have our bullet here set to deferred and we're putting our, our revenue into a liability account until our event takes place and rolling it over. Now, there's not going to be any money associated with our control house, but we're still going to set this up because it's essentially a placeholder for our control host, but also something we can reference next year. So when we're setting up next year's events, we can come back and look at the control host from this year, and we can see what that structure looked like. And it's a great reminder of what our GL account structure should look like. So we have our regular tab here, and you can see that I have event uh, revenue deferred single tickets. And we've got that all set up here with deferred and some earned accounts on the right hand side. And then underneath my season tab, because I wanted to set my revenue aside in a separate GL account from the revenue that I have for my single tickets, I've actually set it up with its own deferred revenue GL account for subscription tickets. And I have a deferred revenue or sorry, an earned revenue account for my season subscription tickets. Some organizations will have a separate GL account structure where they're putting revenue into different GL accounts for their season. Others won't. It really depends on what works for you and your accountant or bookkeeper. So talk with them if you're unsure which approach you need to be taking. Because I've set this up that we're using the multiple tabs here, I have this use the same account unchecked. It means that other type one, type two, and type three are also active. And since I don't have select or detailed items that I want to um, allocate to those GL accounts, I'm not necessarily gonna be focusing on putting money into those places. I just copied over the same GL accounts I had in my single tickets. So once we have our GL account tab set up and we know that we're mimicking exactly what we're doing for the season, regardless of the fact there'll be no revenue, we're ready to move on in our setup. I've built some performances and there's a couple elements I wanna talk about in our performances. 
The most important thing about our season control house is that we mark our performances as season control performances. So we can see how all five of these have a little box next to them. And looking down here, they are control houses. What this does is it tells Sudermanger the behavior of this particular event is different than a standard set, uh, set of performances. And we can mark these by using the checkbox right here at the top of the window. So we don't need to go into each individual event we can highlight them and just check the box after they're built. The second most important thing about our performance structure is our series code. Our series code is going to tell theater manager when there are multiple performances, which performance to put our patrons into when it's booking seats. Some organizations will have multiple performances like this. Some will have even more. You might be running a season for three, four, five weeks. And some of you are going to have season subscriptions that only have one night. For those of you that only have one night, you're not going to have the same structure of the one dash thirst, fi, sat. Instead, what you probably have is one code. But if your season runs on different days of the week, so for example, if you have your first performance on a Friday and your second performance is on a Thursday and your fourth performance is on a Saturday, it's going to be important to have a consistent series code across all of your performances. So you may want to change your series code to be something different. For example, you might want to call it sub. And we can just double click on a performance to open it up. And our series code is right there inside the window, ready to change. So we can type over top of what we see here in the code field. Theater manager is going to capitalize whatever we put in there. And it's just important that these things match. Hey. And so now that we have that all set up, we have our control houses marked, we have our series codes prepped and ready, we're going to head into pricing. Inside my pricing, I've set up my prices with the same names that I'm using for all of my performances, but we're using $0. And the reason that we set them up with $0 is because we want to allocate the revenue for our season subscri subscriptions into the individual performances that they belong to. What that also means is that if a patron exchanges tickets or if they can't come to a particular performance and we're going to refund their tickets, that revenue gets removed specifically from that event rather than charging the patron the entire value of our season package inside the control house, which means we're not allocating that revenue to those individual events, which makes it harder to track them and harder when we need to change or manipulate those tickets and give money back to the patron or change the value, maybe refund or charge them a little bit more if they're moving to a different pricing section. Finally, we're gonna take a quick look at our promotions tab. Inside our promotions tab, we have set up some subscription promotions and our subscription promotions are marked to be season promotions. So inside our ticket type for GL posting, we can see how our bullet here is set to season. This is really important because what it means is that it's not only going to put the revenue into the season GL account, but these promotions behave differently online. When we go to buy tickets, a season promotion does not display in the drop down when you're buying straight tickets uh, to a typical performance. However, these promotions do appear when we're using the season subscription module to roll over, or sorry, when we're using the season subscription module to purchase the entire package. So these are some key elements of setting up our season package, our performances in preparation for our rollover. Now, we have this event set up, ready to go. This is going to be our control house that is going to essentially be our placekeeper. It's going to allow us to book tickets into it. So next season, we know where people are going to be seated. We would have already had a control house for last season. And when we do our rollover, this will be empty. Nobody's going to be seated in it. We'll be booking tickets into it. So when we look at our map, season subscriptions do need to be reserved seating maps, we can see there's currently nobody booked into any of our performances. Okay, now that we've taken a look at our season control house, I'm gonna open up one of our performances for next year. So this is going to be one of our plays that are going to be taking place as a part of our season package. And the main difference for this particular performance or this particular event is that the performances are not marked as season control performances. You can see there is no yellow box on the far left hand side here. So these performances can be a part of the package. They're not going to be the control house or that place saver. We're gonna be booking seats into them. 
they're also set that they're going to print tickets and you may be printing tickets at the box office, you may be allowing that online or a combination of both. We want to make sure that these events are set up like any other typical event you might have within the database. And we're going to have an actual pricing structure. So we are going to see dollar amounts associated with our tickets because this is where our revenue gets tracked. Okay, now that we have our events ready to go, we're going to roll over our season package. Let's close out of these and we'll head back to our season package list window. Now to get to our season package list window, there's a couple of different ways of doing that, but the most common is to head up to patron sales at the top of the window here, come down to season subscription and into set of season packages. Inside this window, I have a season package from last year. So we can already see that here inside the database and we're gonna be rolling over that package. One of the great things is if we roll over a package and we've made a mistake, these packages that we roll over become inactive. So we can always delete the package we rolled over, come back to our previous package, activate it again, and then roll it over once more if we need to. So don't be afraid of rolling over and having something not go quite right because it can always be fixed in quite easily. Okay. So we're gonna be rolling over a theater package here. Let's click on the rollover button up at the top of the window. And when we do that, a little wizard is going to pop up here. Our wizard is asking us which control host or which event do we want to use as a control host for the coming season. And so I'm gonna click on our little icon to the right here to pull up our list of events. I'm gonna add a little bit more to our search here. And there's our control host. I'm going to double click on that to populate it. You can also single click and click that select button in the lower right hand corner. And then theater manager has some questions about how we want to match seats. So if we are moving to a different map, there are some ways of matching based on seat code, best seat number, best seat algorithm. These are all columns that appear inside our seat names inside the map itself. If you're unsure what to match on, you can always talk with the support team. We're happy to assist you with which option is going to be best for what you're doing. So now that we have our control host in here, we're going to head down and click on our next button. And that's going to allow us to see a list of our performances. Now, again, for those of you that only have one performance, we're only going to see one here in the list. And if we've updated our event, or sorry, series performance code, it's going to match up and it's going to align much like we see here. Now, sometimes we have seasons where maybe we're adding an additional performance or maybe we're removing a performance. Perhaps the performance wasn't popular or we didn't have enough seats or we need to cut back on how many performances we're doing in a run. We can always take a performance and drag and drop it into our priority two. When we do that and move it into priority two, what it means is that theater manager is going to seat everybody in priority one first, and then it will take everybody in priority two and it will seat them if their seat is already taken, then theater manager is going to put them on a wait list and we can manage those separately outside of our package. In our case, because all of our series codes match up, we're ready to move on to our actual rollover. I'm going to click on our rollover button and we're going to tell theater manager to proceed. Data manager is going to go ahead and find all of our patrons. It's going to roll over their season package and prep the package that we are going to be using for the coming season. So we'll just give this a moment to go through our 36 subscribers. I really need to work on my subscription base. I'm sure a lot of you have far more subscribers than I do. All right. We're going to go ahead and click on our done button since we've completed our rollover. And we're going to open up our package so that that way we can take a closer look at it. So inside our package, we have the ability to adjust our fiscal year. I'm just going to bring us back into our 2020 year. We can rename our package if we want to. So I might add something to our internal name to indicate that this is the 2022 package, maybe 2022, 2023, just so that that way it stands out and we know internally what it is compared to our other packages. We can see that our starting control host from last year got rolled over and moved into our last year's field. And our this year's field is that new control host that we built and we were just reviewing. So theater manager is going to use this control host from last year to know where our patrons are supposed to be seated. And so when we look at the season subscription module and we're booking seats, all of our little holds or S's, we'll take a look at that in a moment, are based on this control host from the prior year. 
our control house for the coming year will be completely empty until we start actually booking season packages. We're gonna head over to our sales management tab. And inside sales management, we can determine where we want this to be available for sale. So I might say that it can be sold and, sorry, we can be sold at the box office and it can be sold via the internet. We could also say that it can be renewed at the box office and via the internet. And so the difference between these is renewed allows people who already have seats to go through and book their seats within the package, whereas can be sold means that new subscribers can book their seats. Many organizations will hold off on new subscriptions until they've done their renewal process, because that gives them an opportunity to allow people who want to keep their seats to stay where they are, and then bit of time to relocate patrons who want to move to different seating locations. All right. Next up, we're going to head over to event. And inside events, we're going to add in our performances for the coming season. So I'm going to click on our new button down here at the bottom of our list. And that will pop up our search. And I can search for our upcoming season events. I have three of them here. I'm going to grab all three of those and click on select. And that's going to add them into our events tab. So now when I book a season package, theater manager is going to book seats into all of the performances listed here inside the window. We do have the ability to allow event removal and to indicate which performances or sorry, which events patrons need to book into. Some organizations will have additional add-on events. And so you can indicate that those are add-ons and Theater manager will set it up or will allow patrons to add those particular performances if they want to, but not make it mandatory as a part of the package. Okay. So, for example, we might decide that our third performance is optional. We'll highlight it, click on our mandatory optional button down at the bottom. And we can then define which ones we want to keep. So we're going to say it is mandatory to have let's say two of our performances. And we might say that these are two that are going to be mandatory. There we go. So those two are mandatory and our third event is optional. So patrons can either choose to buy tickets to that or they can just buy to the first two. So it just allows a little bit more flexibility with our, our performance, or sorry, our event structure inside our package. All right. Back here, I'm just going to check our at the box office now that I have some events in here, and I'll also do our can be renewed. And since our package is all rolled over and ready to go, I'm going to click our save button up at the top of the window. Inside our patron tab, if we do a quick search, here are all of our patrons that came from our prior package. I'm going to pull this over to the right hand side a little bit and I'm going to go find our previous package, the one that's now inactive because we rolled it over. So we can see this is the package we just rolled over, we renamed it. We can also see that there's a theater package from last year, our 2021 season. I'm going to double click on that. When I open this up and I look at our patrons, and give this a quick search. Here are all of our patrons that have booked into that package. And so anybody who booked and has a little smiley face and package is completed or their status is renewed or new seats completed, all of those patrons are gonna be moved over into this particular package. However, we'll be able to see that there are some patrons that don't get moved. So if a patron has a not started or a canceled status, they will not be included in the rollover. So do make sure that before you complete your rollover, you just give this uh, patron tab a quick peek to verify that everybody's status is set correctly before you complete your rollover and that people who shouldn't be rolling over aren't coming with you, that they have a status, let's double click on this real quick, they have a status of their package that indicates that they are not going to be a part of the rollover. And again, that's gonna be either not started or one of the canceled options and they'll get left behind. Okay. So all of our patrons that were part of the prior package get rolled over except those that indicate that they aren't. And that can lead to things like having different counts in our sales management tab. 
sorry, our description tab when I get back there. So we can see that there were 38 subscribers last year. There are only 36 this year. And that's because a couple of our subscribers chose not to renew last year. We'll close out of our season package there and we'll come back to our primary package, our newly rolled over package. And so from here, there's a variety of different things that we can be doing. We can go through and print renewal notices if we want to. We have that button here at the top of the window. You can also create a custom renewal notice. If you're curious on how to do that, feel free to reach out to the support team. We can send you some help, online help pages with some details surrounding that. And we can also book patrons into season packages from this location. Now, some of you may have an early bird package price and our subscribers, when we roll them over, are going to be using the same price code and promotion they had in our prior year. If you have an early bird promotion, you may be wanting to change the value of your tickets so that that way they're using the early bird promotion until the early bird period finishes. And then you might be changing your promotions again to indicate that they're paying the full subscription price. For that type of work, we're going to close out of our subscription package, um, sorry, season package detail window, and we're going to open up our subscription option up here at the top of the window, this yellow box. And inside our yellow box, we have a list of all of our packages that are currently active. So I'm looking right now at our theater package for the current year. And nobody is renewed yet, so everybody has lowercase s's on their seats of where they're potentially going to be. As we mentioned earlier, that type of information, those lowercase s's, are going to be pulled from the control house from last year. So these are the seating locations where they were booked into in the prior season, specifically in that control house. So if somebody relocates, don't forget to move their seats in that control house. All right, so if we need to change some of the pricing of our seats, then go ahead and highlight the patrons that we want to change our pricing for. So we're just going to grab everybody here inside the list. And we can come up here to our alter button, this little red wrench. Let me click on our red wrench. It's going to give us an opportunity to decide where we want to move things. So we can say we're going to start with all of our subscription tickets and we're going to move them into a different promotion. Um, I should have an early bird on the right hand side here, but I don't. Let's pretend we're moving from early bird over to subscription. So we can highlight where we want to move them if we have specific price codes we need to move. So for example, if you have a early bird price code, maybe you're using a one, two, three structure for early bird, four, five, six for the rest of your season or for regular prices, then you may be changing your one and turning it into a four. So we'd want to go ahead and enter those values into our price code um, on your starting price code on the left-hand side here and the price code we wanna to convert to on the right. And then once we have that done, we can go down to step five. We can choose to only do the selected patrons or we can choose to do all of our subscribers in the entire season package. And so when we do this, I'm just gonna put in a quick price code here. I'm using price code one and we're converting to price code one. There's no seats that match. Um, when we do this and move through this process, then Theater Manager is going to take us back to the window in the background here, and all of our subscribers are going to have different promotions associated with them. So as long as our starting promotion and price code um, are valid for seats within the package, then it's going to transfer those and move those over into the options we choose on the right-hand side. Very important that if you're moving some of your seats that are in the same section as seats that currently exist. So some organizations might have a pricing structure shift that they're doing where they might already have seats in price code four with the sales, particular sales promotion that they also need to convert. Convert those ones first and then move your other seats because you really wanna make sure you're not moving people into a price point that you also need to move people out of. So always move people out of the price point first, then move the people who need to go into that price point second. All right. And now that we've done our season rollover and we've completed our exchange of prices, if we do need to do that pricing or repricing structure, then we can go ahead and generate our renewal notices. We can do that in our package window that we saw before. We can do it in the detail window here. We can also do that in reports. And again, we can customize those notices if we need to and then send them out to our patrons. And our final step is booking. 
So we can book tickets here from inside this window if we like. Some organizations like to be, or some people like to be inside this window booking subscriptions as they come through. Others like to go into the patron record and book tickets, whichever works best for you. We won't worry too much about the details of that. Uh, just look for the green book button, either in the season tab of the patron record or at the top of the window when you have your patrons selected. And that's our webinar for today.